Hi, it's State Representative Jim Walsh here for our weekly update. We're in week five of the projected 15-week legislative session in Olympia. But I wanted to take a minute this time to talk about several of the bills I've prime sponsored, so my bills, so-called, but kind of explain to you where each one is in the process so you can get a little idea of how it works trying to get a bill into law here at the state capitol. The first bill I want to talk about is House Bill 1037. It's a bill that I worked on based on some constituent requests that clarifies a little bit of ambiguity in state law saying that families can bury family members on private property that the family owns, an individual in the family owns. It's of course a great western tradition that people buried family in private burial plots on their land. Washington law had gotten a little wonky about whether this was still legal or not. House Bill 1037 clears up that it is legal. You can't run a commercial cemetery, but you can have a family burial plot on land that you own. So House Bill 1037 had a committee hearing. It was voted out of the committee with a couple of amendments that helped it. The Rules Committee reviewed it and okayed it to go to the floor of the House for a vote. And now 1037 is on what's called the floor calendar. It's waiting its turn for a debate and a vote on the floor of the legislature. I'll mention another bill that I've prime sponsored, House Bill 1677. That's something a little different. It's an agency request bill from the Public Disclosure Commission, the PDC, the state agency that's in charge of all kinds of campaign finance reporting, all the information you see about how much money a candidate has raised or spent, whether they spent their money on TV ads or on digital social media ads. All the information, public information about campaigns and elections goes through the PDC, the Public Disclosure Commission. The PDC came to me because I do a lot of work on transparency and public information and asked me to prime sponsor what's mostly a technical bill that updates some of the state law that controls how these disclosures and campaign information are made public. So I took that bill to committee and it just had its committee hearing today and is likely to get some kind of action, a vote out of its committee and move on through the process. And that's a good thing because in week six, which is coming up of the 15-week legislative session, there is what's called policy cutoff. It's the first of several deadlines that take place during the session. And if a bill hasn't met certain process mileposts by the cutoff, in this case, if it hasn't gotten through a vote on the floor of the legislature by the cutoff date, uh, it's not likely to become law this session. It gets put into what is basically a hold pattern where it can become law still, but most likely it will have to wait its turn for another session. So those two bills have both gotten pretty well into the process and are likely to get through before the cutoff. A couple of other bills I've run, House Bill 1397, the Oakley Carlson Act, and House Bill 1788, which would restore some parental control over how minor children can get medical care and health care, are both waiting for their hearings. So they're not as far through the process as the first two bills I mentioned. But the process is the process. And if you're going to make uh, good ideas into law, you have to help work your bills through the process and meet the various deadlines. I'll talk to you more next week about some other good ideas that are waiting to become law, a few bad ideas we're trying to stop, and how the legislative session works, its schedules, its mechanics, and the processes of turning bills into laws. In the meantime, have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon.